Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. We're gonna knock these last ones out. Martin Luther King Jr., a lot of people know him as our strong human rights leader in the U.S. Um, I always encourage anyone, if you're in a hurry, look at his speech at Riverside called Beyond Vietnam. Everyone should find that on YouTube somewhere. Hatshepsut, some folks don't know, we have female uh, pharaohs, and so I always like the young people to know it's not just the, the men, but Hatshepsut was known far and wide for her um, ambassadorship, let's call it, or her, um, her uh, statesmanship in different regions other than just the narrow Nile Valley. If you go there, you'll see some very, very impressive um, temples and things built in her name. Khaliderat, very quickly. By now, the Arabs are in Egypt, so they're going to Nubia. They run into Khaliderat and his people. They have a war. They come to a treaty that lasts 700 years. So this is just giving you an idea that we knew how to maintain our sovereignty back in those days. Muhammad Ali, greatest boxer of all time. Of course, um, I tell the children a lot about his stance against the Vietnam War and joining the military and how they punished him and how he took a principal position. And I think that's important for the youngsters to know. Uh, Lachor Jop there in Senegal, uh, the Damal or the King of Kayor, he basically struggled against the French who decided to run a railroad through his kingdom and uh, fought them to the death. Antonio Maceo, of course, the, the Cubans had their War of Liberation against, War of Independence against the Spanish. And one of the two main generals was an African general, Maceo. They call him the Bronze Titan. A lot of respect down there in Cuba. Patrice Lumumba here. Uh, I talk some about Lumumba to the youth, but I talk more about what was going on with the rubber trade, with Leopold, with Congo, the 10 million Africans who died because of the rubber trade. I want the children to know what happened there. And of course, about how Lumumba later on was their first um, prime minister or president after uh, colonial times ended. In Kwavanika, he struggled against the Germans. Um, at the end of the day, of course, the Germans finally prevailed, but uh, you know, they cut his head off. I mean, after he died, they took his head to Germany. And then the Germans from there took it to the, the British, took it, you know, and they took over. And so I've always wondered what this deal was with his head that they felt like they had to have it, finally delivering it back to Tanzania. But there's a lot to say about his, uh, his actual career, struggling against uh, the gym. We're gonna put Robert Mugabe up here. Uh, this has been like this for a while, but uh, Mugabe's got the land back, or got a lot of it back, struggled for it. So there's a lot of controversy. A lot of people don't like Mugabe's name up here, especially if they've been watching too much BBC. <laughs> Okay, Elijah Muhammad uh, of the United States. He's here because in the U.S. it's probably the closest thing we've had to a nation is what the Nation of Islam was doing back during Elijah Muhammad's day. Ida B. Wells, um, anti-lynching crusader, journalist. This also gives me a chance to give the ch let the children look at some of the pictures and some of the documentation on lynching when we go back up and, and we go over those things. Very courageous woman. John Akello down in Zanzibar, you know, the black Africans native to the place were always being crushed and, and dominated uh, by the Omani Arabs until they had their revolution and broke that up. And uh, he was the leader of that freedom struggle. Fela Kute, we know Fela. And um, not, <laughs> what can you say? I mean, everything they did to Fela, he was able to respond with more genius, more brilliance, more music, more defiance. And so he's our man, Zumbia, Brazil. The children get to know about going overseas, the Africans that were in, working in Brazil as slaves, Portuguese plantations. They escaped to their quilombos. Zumbi was the leader of the po most popular, most um, successful Colombo called Palmares, which lasted about 100 years. Uh, <clears throat> now, Cemento, Brazil, for some of us who were trying to find out what was going with the Afro Brazilians during these most modern times, looking into their history and their culture. He was always one that did a lot of documentation and also made himself available to anyone and everyone who wanted to learn. He's also a poet and an artist in these things. Uh, Sam Nujoma, of course, they were, Namibia was struggling against South Africa, trying to get their freedom, and Nujoma led that, led that freedom struggle. Sorry, I'm talking kind of fast here. <clears throat> Booker T. Washington, 
uh, Tuskegee University, an educator. I think tell people they should read Tyrene Wright to find out more about what he was doing from a Pan-Africanist standpoint. So he's not what a lot of people think he is. And so I think the more we study about Booker T, uh, the more we'll admire his work. B.B. Uh, King, blues man. Uh, he's there with Lucille. You don't have to say much more. My father loves him, and I love him too. My man B.B. Walter Rodney, brilliant, brilliant uh, thinker. A lot of people have read How Europe Underdeveloped Africa from Guyana. He taught all around the Africa and also came back, unfortunately, was killed in his native Guyana. Queen Amina, the great house of Queen in northern Nigeria. If you go there today, they still you can still see what they call the Amina Walls. Uh, that encompass this huge territory that she controlled the trade and militarily also. Eduardo Manlani, I mentioned earlier about um, uh, Frilemo. He was the one who you know, went to Oberlin College in the U.S., uh, got his Ph.D. from Northwestern, all of that, but he still went back and reorganized in Dar es Salaam, actually, organized the groups that became Frilemo to struggle against the Portuguese. Uh, he was killed by a letter bomb, parcel bomb. Garrett Morgan, I always like the children to know about the inventions of the gas mask and the uh, traffic signal. And they're always very fascinated to know that it was a black man who did that. Great Franz Fanon, wretched of the earth, uh, uh, black, uh, black skin, white mask. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, psychiatrist, just brilliant all around um, writer and thinker. John Chalimbwe who was actually trained in black Baptist ministry in the U.S., came back, worked in Malawi for a while, but finally he had to uh, revolt against the British because of the way they were behaving among his native men. Seiko Toure of Guinea, when he decided that he was not going to go along with the French after the colonial times and join their French community, the French tried to destroy everything, his infrastructure, and on and on. He also, for the, for the Ghanaians, know him because he brought Kwame Nkrumah in. As, their, as his co-president. Uh, Ami Césaire, which one is really one of our brilliant thinkers and writers, uh, one of the formulators of, of, um, of um, uh, Negritude. And if you look at some of his books, like Discourse on Colonialism, plus his poet, poetry and his writing, one of our most brilliant Pan-African thinkers. Seiko Touré, excuse me, Samori Touré, uh, the most effective fighter against French in West Africa. He consolidated a lot of other kingdoms or a lot of different um, areas, but they were strong, solid, and good resistance against the French. Of course, they finally captured him, sent him into exile. Uh, and he was also related. Seiko Touré is a descendant of uh, Samurai Touré. Kwame Touré, who took Kwame from Kwame Nkrumah, Touré from Seiko Touré, although it doesn't have the O there. He was our Stokely Carmichael, when so we were growing up, black power, Black power, black power. He was also um, married to Mary McKee before a while and also uh, started the All African People Revolutionary Party, which is um, still in function. Our great teachers, Dr. Clark, Dr. Ben Yakinen, uh, between them, God knows how much material they've written and edited. Uh, historians, African history, African civilizations, civilizations, and the like. I put them together because they were together a lot, the dynamic duel. Winnie Mandela, the other Mama Africa. We know she struggled all the way through and probably the end. We think maybe not got the prop she should, but she's definitely going to get them from us. And Francis Cress Wilson uh, helped to clarify uh, the dynamics of white supremacy. And that's the end of the wall. And over there, and I know everybody is waiting, so we got to move fast, but over there, it's maybe if we come up this way, you can see it a little better. The tree might be in the way. This is the library we're building. And if we need to walk over there, that's all good. Oh, uh, we can if you'd like to. Oh, here's the library we're building. Uh, the first level is really the library. The big middle level is the all-purpose room. We'll have our studies. We'll have our conferences. We'll have uh, whatever functions we have up there. And then the top, we're looking at putting either some offices or some accommodations we haven't decided which. It's a pretty big building when you get close to it. So you'll be hearing from us in about 
early next year, probably about March, we're going to really kick off a serious fundraising operation to get this uh, library under control and get it done. So this is the first floor. And as you can see, there's a lot of space. You got your red, black, and green chairs in there. That's what's up. We got our red, black, and green chairs just so the children make them learn faster. And family, and that is the restaurant. So you can see this is a big compound. How big is the property? It's about two and a half acres. Looks bigger, but yeah, it, it does. It looks. Actually, it, it is. It is. Man. Two and a half acres. It looks. Yeah, it looks closer to three to four. Yeah. I might have to remeasure that. Everybody says, "Are you sure?" But uh, it's ten plots, and those are a little bit bigger plots. Doing those oh, you got you know, bigger plot. So you got like um, but hundred by hundred. Yeah, they're 100 by 90, I think. That it's, it's like, as, as time go along, the plots are getting smaller. Smaller, and smaller. <laughs> now people are like 90 by 70, you know? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect, because the ones we got was uh, 100 by 80, and now I'm hearing 100 by 70. Right. Uh, so. All right, family, so that was another complete tour of the ancestral wall family. 90 plus portraits, big beautiful paintings all black revolutionaries all right, all right. and family it's been another beautiful time here we're gonna make another move and our sister Erna and everyone else is waiting for us so we're gonna make another move and we're gonna reconnect with our brother Jerry on another wonderful reconnection on our next Ghana journey of a lifetime. All right, y'all, thank you. So you wanna, you wanna give any numbers, anything? Or any, yeah, or any uh, well, website, or any links? And I'll put it in the description box Af also. Definitely find us on the African Ancestral Wall. You just um, put that in your YouTube search and you'll see a lot of different things. So there's some contacts on there, but for those we're looking internationally. The uh, phone number 233-244-047. Uh, no, 077825. Right. Yeah, perfect. And I can always just add that in it's the all description there. Yeah, you section. You can see that in the description. Right? And I uh, got your information, so I'll make sure uh, we keep things rolling, man. So I appreciate you once again, my brother. And, all right. Uh, thanks for coming, y'all. Keep on pushing, and we'll. Get all the right people in Africa at the right time. Okay.